Satirical news website, the Babylon Bee, has been suspended from Twitter and locked out of their account over an article they published naming Rachel Levine as its man of the year. For those that aren't familiar, Rachel Levine is a transgender woman and four-star admiral of the United States Public Health Service Commissioned Corps. I think I got that one right. We'll double check in a second. USA Today recently named Rachel Levine as one of its women of the year in response The Babylon Bee made a satirical claim. Well, I guess technically you could argue it's not because it's not really satirizing. It's literally just declaring the Babylon Bee has a man of the year. And it's named Rachel Levine. Twitter, of course, says this is hate speech, particularly around harassment or threats of an individual. Seth Dillon, the CEO of the Babylon Bee, I believe he's CEO, could be wrong. Let's let's just pull up his tweet and make sure I believe CEO of the Babylon Bee. That's right. He says, I just received this notice that we've been locked out of our account for hateful conduct. We were told our account will be restored in 12 hours, but the countdown won't begin until we delete the tweet that violates the Twitter rules. He says, we're not deleting anything. Truth is not hate speech. If the cost of telling the truth is the loss of our Twitter account, then so be it. I've received some messages from people asking how they can help. I can think of a few ways. Never censor yourself. Insist that two and two make four, even if Twitter tries to compel you to say otherwise. Make them ban tens of millions of us. Get on our email list so we can have direct contact with you. It's a perfect, it's not a perfect solution. He goes on to say, at least we own our email list and become a premium subscriber. So if you definitely want to support the Babylon Bee, it's one way you can do it. Now, I think there's something interesting here. The Babylon Bee produces satire, not truth. But I I think I get the point Seth Dillon is trying to make. But there is something interesting in this first. The tweet uh, from uh, the the post from Twitter that was sent to the Babylon Bee says that they violated our rules against hateful conduct. You may not promote violence against, threaten or harass other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability or serious disease. Now, we know that's not true. There's questions about whether or not what Seth Dillon did uh, or the Babylon Bee, I should say, was actually in any way a violation of these rules. It was not promoting violence, it wasn't threatening, and it wasn't harassing anyone. The article itself was just naming an individual as man of the year. I find this interesting because Seth Dillon refers to this as the truth. And, well, there's an interesting point to be made here. I know it often comes up, and I always mention that it often comes up whenever it does come up, but I went on Joe Rogan with Jack Dorsey and Vijaya Gade. The reason why I think it's important to bring up is because in that conversation, I mentioned to Jack Dorsey that... Their, the Twitter rules are outright biased. And this is the perfect example from four years ago. I think it was four years ago, was it? Did I, was it 2018 I went on Rogan's show with, with Dorsey? Maybe it was 29, I don't know. I think it was, yeah, it, it had, yeah, it had to be 2018. That's crazy. But this, is, this exemplifies exactly what I said. I told Jack, your rules are biased. And, and he, he looked like, um, he taken uh, issue with that claim. He was like, what? No, they're not. How are they? How are they biased? Twitter has a misgendering policy. That is to say on Twitter, if you misgender someone, you will be suspended or banned, right? Okay. To a conservative, misgendering someone would be if they are biologically male, it would be misgendering to refer to them as a female. To the progressive left, misgendering someone would be if a person identifies as a certain, uh, as, as male, and you call them something they don't identify as. I find something truly fascinating in this whole circumstance about internal uh, universes and external university, universes, people who view that there's something greater than themselves or people who view themselves as greater than others. I think that is a core component of the culture war being exemplified here. On Twitter, if an individual says, you must, you must live in the world for which I view myself. Twitter says we follow that train of thought. Now, truth be told, it doesn't really, uh, because there are some issues where Twitter would just ban you regardless of what you think. So it's kind of like they've settled upon this issue. But here we have the Babylon Bee. I suppose this is not even satire, according to Babylon Bee, if they're saying it's truth. They literally just said the Babylon Bee has named Rachel Levine its man of the year. Now, of course, they're making a political point, I think is obvious to say. Twitter may see this and say, you're not allowed to make that point. But therein lies the issue. The article from the Babylon Bee isn't in any way disparaging. I suppose because they're a satirical news website, it can be seen as offensive for them to make this statement. 
But if the people at the Babylon Bee and conservatives genuinely uh, feel that it's misgendering someone who is biologically male to call them a woman, well, then they're standing by their principled belief in how they would use pronouns, and it's not in any way harassing to do so. If an individual feels harassed, and, and we are going to set rules and take action based on what someone thinks or feels, then we have no standard of justice. In, the court, in a court of law, you know, someone who's been victimized, there has to be a clear and objective victimization. In this instance, we're moving into this universe where there is no such objective victimization. The Babylon Bee did not insult or harass this person. They made a joke. I mean, maybe they didn't even really make a joke. They made a point. But are we not allowed to make jokes about people at all? Well, of course, on Twitter, you are just not some people. Now, Jack Dorsey said on the Joe Rogan podcast, it's because the suicide rate among transgender individuals is very high. I responded with the suicide rate among many different professions is really high. I mean, police officers, my, my understanding is have a very high suicide rate. I, actually, I'm, uh, I, I'm pretty sure we brought that up, but it's been so long. Fact check me because maybe, maybe, you know, I'm misremembering. It was a long time ago. And it was a long conversation, but I'll just add that point now. Police officers and dentists, I'm told, have very high suicide rates. Are they going to say from now on, don't make fun of cops? Well, of course not. They've, they are picking and choosing their ideology to be paramount. I don't think Twitter should do that. I certainly think there's a, there's a, there can be a policy against directly naming someone and harassing them. But harassment then has to be objective harassment, which is, in most circumstances, if you walk up to someone and, and yell at them, it's not harassment. If you walk up to someone and yell at them, they tell you to stop, and you yell at them again, might might be harassment. If they walk away from you and you follow them and you keep screaming at them, now you are likely to get arrested by a police officer because in an, in, in, in an objective court of law, they're going to say, you are getting, you're, you're going up to someone yelling at them, they tried leaving, you, you kept following them, you kept yelling at them. At a certain point, the incessant action of yelling or berating someone or being aggressive towards them can be considered harassment. In this instance, I don't see how that that makes sense. Just the Babylon Bee made a statement. So here, herein lies the question today, right? We have this article from USA Today. Be true to yourself, a message from the nation's highest ranking openly transgender official. USA Today is allowed to declare that a person is a woman. That's fine. The Babylon Bee is not allowed to declare that a person is a man. Not okay. One of, the, one of the things I've been exploring or, or sort of thinking about over the past several weeks is um, the idea among us, I, I mentioned this briefly just a moment ago, that there's something bigger than us. And I wonder if that is a major component in the two different factions of the culture war. So I'll give you an example. I believe in free speech. Why? Because I believe that other people exist. That, that's kind of it, right? So the, I, I am not the end all be all, nor are you or anyone else. We are all people. We are all equal in the uh, eyes of the universe or God, or however you want to describe it. And there is something larger and bigger than us outside of ourselves. I'm not saying that means religion or God or anything. I'm saying clearly the universe is massive and to our mind seemingly infinite. It exists so profoundly beyond our comprehension that we struggle every day to try and discover bits of the universe. From that perspective comes this view that, well, everyone has rights. My rights should are, are equal to someone else's rights. Through due process, people can have certain uh, um, rights restricted, I suppose. That is to say that uh, your freedom of movement will be taken from you if you are committing violent acts and violating the rights of others. Um, You'll be put in jail, right? And so I believe that uh, because I am not the end-all be-all and because this world does not belong to me and because we're all trying to work and live together as a community, well, that is to say then other people have rights too. And that's, this is where I I come in and say, this is why my perspective on things typically is like a left libertarian point of view. It's very communal or or, or communitarian or whatever, not communist, but I certainly think we need to come together and work together and strive for common goals and, um, you know, end violence. Now we take a look at the modern left. We take a look at someone like um, Leah Thomas, Leah Thomas, whatever, transgender male swimmer. Um, What I mean by that is a person who is born biologically male and is transgender. This is an individual who I believe is uh, deeply narcissistic. Now, I have no issue with somebody with Rachel Levine or, or Leah Thomas or anybody who wants to live as they want to live. That, I think, you know, is, is, is immaterial to, uh, to the argument. The argument is, do you impose yourself on others? Well, as for Rachel Levine, 
No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't I don't know much about the individual. And if Joe Biden or anybody else, anybody else wants to appoint Levine to any kind of position, I really don't care. Now, now people conservatives absolutely have a different view than that. They they take uh, issue with much of what's going on with uh, transgenderism and things like that. And sure, not my point. Leah Thomas, in my opinion, is deeply narcissistic. I mean, to the extent that you could be no more narcissistic, that is the the maximum amount of narcissism a person could have. There's that uh, we talked about. Uh, talked, I talked about this last week. The photo of Leah Thomas winning the NCAA swimming championships, and then you have the biological females all huddled together, taking a picture together without Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas, of course, is biologically male, six foot four, broad shoulders, and all the advantages that come with being male from uh, prenatal testosterone. And I'm talking about. I'm not talking about uh, hormone replacement because hormone, hormone replacement does not change prenatal testosterone. So uh, at, at least according to what we know in science now, if you trust science, and I do, I believe the science. So Leah, uh, Leah Thomas has prenatal testosterone advantages such as more fast twitch muscle. Um, I believe what comes with that is, I believe fast twitch muscle is the, is the, is the predominant um, effect in 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 um, in vitro, right? So uh, then you also have the advantages of male puberty: six foot four, broad shoulders, longer arms. This is greatly advantaging Leah Thomas in the swimming uh, competitions, specifically for um, sprinting. Women actually have an advantage in endurance swimming, and that's why when you look at the the, the time periods uh, for long distance swimming, it, it, the gap starts to close between Leah Thomas and the other female competitors. Though Leah still is winning all of them over a long enough period of time, women. Can uh, swim. Women can swim longer, but not as as fiercely, due to uh, higher body fat concentration, uh, a percentage which is uh, it creates more buoyancy. So it's easier to stay up. Interesting thing I was reading. Anyway, I digress. Back to the main point. Leah Thomas is imposing it on these on the, on these women. Now, again, no issue with you know transgenderism or anything like that. I want to make sure that's clear because of course the left will try and take it out of context. What I'm saying is, you know. Uh, I made, a, I made a point about this on Twitter. It's really, really funny how this plays out because it, it, it really does play into this idea of the narcissistic left. So I was talking on Twitter about what was happening with Leah Thomas. And I said, no, not, not one of these women, these females in the, in, in the swim, uh, uh, in the competition, stood up for themselves. I will not pretend or, or be mad on someone else's behalf who is not mad. So here's my point. Apparently, conservatives jumped on and said, Tim Pool's hot take. Look, if you have, um, I believe there's like, what, 16 females and, and one male in this competition. And the six, 16, and not a single one of them expresses any discontent. Then why am I supposed to be angry? It's, it's like, imagine going to a party and everyone's laughing and having a good time. And then you get mad because the spinach dip doesn't have enough, you know, spinach in it. No one else is complaining. You're like, I think this party would be better. And it's like, dude, you're not actually at the, like, imagine you're outside the party looking in the window. You're not, you're not at the party. No one at the party seems to care. Why should I outside listen to you complaining about how their party has too much spinach or not enough? I'm going to be like, bro, it's not your party. You're not there. Any one of the people at that party can complain about the spinach dip. Nobody is. I'm, I can't intervene on behalf of somebody who hasn't even publicly expressed discontent. If someone at the party was like, yo, this party sucks, man. There's no spinach in the spinach dip. I'd be like, sounds like it's a bad party, I guess. Some people seem to be mad. And then I'd be like, hey, guy, get some more spinach. None of these women are speaking up. But one young woman is speaking up. But it's, it's the only woman who was bumped because of Leah Thomas. So once again, I'm just like, guys, narcissistic universe. I have tremendous respect for this young woman who is speaking out, saying, you know, this is unfair that she was bumped. But I have a question as to why none, none of the other women spoke up. Is it because they didn't get bumped? So it's very difficult for me to say, you know, someone, someone was not invited to the party. And they're outside saying, this party's lame. And I'm like, dude, you're not in the party. I'll go, I would have been, you know, but someone else showed up and took my spot. And I'd be like, okay, now I agree. That's messed up. But no one else in the party is upset about it, that you got kicked out. Maybe they don't want you there. You see, there is, that, that, that's, my view, that's my problem here. So here's where it gets funny. There's, there, there is something really interesting in this Babylon Bee story that I had to record a segment about. That USA Today and Babylon Bee both made an a, a statement. Only one was considered wrong or banned. I, I wonder what would happen if, you know, conservatives controlled Twitter. 
And USA Today came out and made this statement. I have to be honest, I don't think conservatives would do anything about it, which is why conservatives tend to lose a lot of the culture war battles. They just be like, we don't care. But that is part of their values, you know, live and let live or free speech to a certain degree. Uh, I should say to a great degree, but I don't see conservatives controlling a platform and banning this kind of stuff. It's possible to be honest. But in terms of a large corporate structure, you, by all means, you might, you might get smaller uh, and alternative sites that would ban, you know, USA Today. I don't see it for the most part. So here's where things I find, I, 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 here's where I think, I think things get fascinating. And I'm going to throw myself into this story. So I made a point. Actually, let me just, let me, let me pull up this first tweet. I made a point um, about how I don't, I don't tolerate BS. And the point of the tweet was quite literally to uh, be somewhat self-deprecating in that um, I'm a bit uh, uh, impatient, tightly wound, and easily agitated. Not really positive qualities. This was in reference to what was going on with the uh, um, NCAA swim meet. I said, I went to a diner with my girlfriend and was told it was a 20-minute wait. After only a few minutes, a couple walked in and was seated right away. I complained and left right away. I don't tolerate BS and I don't tolerate people who think I should care when they do. This was part of a series of tweets where I was saying, this, this woman, Emma Wyant, she was second place in the swim meet. I said, people were like, she's the real winner. I said, no, she's not. She lost. She deserved to lose, and she is not the winner. She has silver. And, and uh, a lot of people agreed. My point was, she didn't speak out. She didn't say no. She said, I agree to these terms, and I will abide by them. If you, if you go to a casino, and you're like, how does it work? You put, you put $25 down, they'll give you two cards in blackjack. And if you, if you get better, if you beat the dealer, you know, closer to 21 without going over, you win double your money. They'll give you another $25 chip. If you went there and said, okay, I'll play and then lost your chip. And then all of a sudden everyone's like, that's not fair. They took this person's money. I'd be like, what do you mean? You agreed to play by these. You didn't complain. If you show up and the rules were changed, or they did something that seemed untoward, and you said, whoa, 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 whoa I I'm speaking up and speaking out about this, then I'd be like, okay, I want to hear your arguments. Absolutely. Emma Wyant did not complain, did not stand up, nor did any of the other swimmers who were on that podium. They all just went along with it. So why am I going to assume they're mad? The point of my tweet. Me? I have a short fuse. The point was that I'm, I'm such a short fuse guy that I walk into a diner and sit down and if they sit someone before me, I get up and I walk out. I'm like, you lose my business. And you know what I say to them? I, so I know you don't care, okay? I, I, when I complain, I say, listen, you're, you're packed. There's a massive wait time. You're probably not concerned about me as a customer. That's fine. I don't need to be here imposing myself on you. I will leave. Now they say, yeah, it's easy to say that about a diner, but you know, these women have worked so hard all their lives to get be in these competitions. And I'm just like, dude, if if I, you know, if I set a reservation for a fancy restaurant and I was waiting a month or a week, yeah, it would be really annoying. I'd be in there and they're like, I know you have a reserva reservation for eight, but we're giving your table to someone else. I would leave. Okay, again, I know it's not the same as someone who's worked for 18 years or whatever. But at a certain point, if they are telling you, you will not win, and there's nothing you can do about it, what's the point of fighting for 18 years if you won't speak up? This is what I just don't understand. 18 years, and you wouldn't stand up and be like, I object, I've been fighting for 18 years, under these rules, I'm allowed these things, and you've changed them on me at the last minute, not okay, create a new division. Here's the, here's the point I'm ultimately getting to. For one, I think you understand my point about standing up. The interesting thing about this tweet is that the left, I have no idea why, decided to make, like, this is the one thing they got mad at me about. Out of all the things I typically tweet, like the things that they would say, Tim Pool's transphobic, those don't make it to Reddit. This tweet was the front top page on Reddit in two different subreddits, and they were wrong. It was fascinating. They want so, so much to hate me for something that makes, that's inane, to be completely honest. They made this up. Frank Luntz, Frankie boy, come on, man. He responded with me, Tim, before complaining, did you ask if the other couple had a reservation? I'd like to point out something. First, the assumption that the, co the greater context of what was happening was easily contained in 280 characters and that 
I am such a frustrated and angry guy. I didn't bother to check into what was going on. I simply went, oh, harumph and stormed out. First of all, even if that was the case, it's totally fine. It's kind of my point. If I'm waiting in line, no, no joke. I've been, I'll be at a seven. I was at a 7-Eleven once and I'm waiting in line. It was a long line. It was like four people. And I got up to the counter and this is a true story. This was in LA. And I had like a, 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 a hot dog and like a Slurpee or something. This is a long time ago. And as I'm about to put, hand the guy my card, another guy walks in front of me and puts his hand up. And then he says, I just need to get this real quick. And the cashier looks at me and says, okay. And I went, no, 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 no. Hold on there, buddy. This guy just butted in front of me and you immediately just go to keep your stuff. I'm out. I don't want it. And I put it on the counter. I was like, you can have it. Dude, I do have a short fuse. Here's the point though. Diners don't take reservations for the most part. Some diners do, you know, depends, especially in a big city, maybe. But local diners don't take reservations. And it's weird that the response from so many people was, in st- like Frank Luntz, I can respect from asking, did you ask if the other, co- other couple had a reservation? They didn't. <laughs> that was the point. So the full story is basically, we were sitting down and there's a couple seats and they're like, it'll be 20 minutes. And then everyone gets seated around us. And then, you know, we're sitting there and then four guys walk in, they get seated. And I think I'm like, it's, it, we've been waiting, you know, we, we've been waiting and I, and I, it's frustrating, but, uh, they're not going to give a table, a four seater table to two people. So I get it. That happens. Then a couple that came in that we know pulled in after us, walked in and said, can we get a table for two? And they went, yes. Uh, and they looked around and said, yeah, we have an opening right this way. It was clearly, uh, so I got up and I was like, you guys, we've been waiting here. And they were like, oh, sorry. And I was like, it's okay. And we walked out. I'm not going to impose myself on somebody. That's my point. I, if, if, if there's a situation happening out before me where somebody doesn't accommodate me, I always say this, no one owes me any favors. None. You don't got to do me a favor. When uh, 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 I had, to, speaking of Joe Rogan, when when I had some beef with Joe back, you know, 10 years ago because he booked me and then canceled on me and then he booked me a year later and then canceled on me and I had flown out, got canceled, flown out, got canceled. Partly my fault, young and, and excited, going on the Joe Rogan show and Joe's attitude was much more like, yeah, you're booked, whatever. And then at the last minute, sorry, bro, I'm, I'm busy. I can't do it. And it like, I flew myself out really wanting to do this. And it was, it was a mistake. My response was, look, man, Joe doesn't owe me any favors. Now it is, look, fool me once, shame on me. Uh, fool, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You know, the second time I flew myself out and then he canceled on me, I should have been like, you know, after the first time I should have said, but you know, look, Joe doesn't owe me any favors. He never did. And I'm like, I'm not going to get mad at a guy for not doing me a favor. Having me on a show would be huge for me. And guess what? It really was when I finally did come on a show. And so that, that's my attitude. If I go to someone else's business and they're like, we can seat you or not. If they don't seat me as per our arrangement, I have no problem being like, I get it. I'll leave. I'm not going to put up a, make a scene. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to yell at anybody. I'm just going to be like, have a nice day. And I don't think they care. And that's kind of the issue. I'm like, if you don't need me as a customer and I feel my time is wasted, I'm out. The fascinating thing is the left's response to this was that Tim Pool discovers how reservations work. First of all, that's a grand assumption about what even really happened. And diners typically don't take reservations. And the other things people were posting was, were things like uh, uh, they knew Tim wouldn't tip well or something like that, which is absurd because I actually tip kind of insane, to be completely honest. But I, I, as much as I, am, I, I will personally admit, this one in, includes me. It's personal, and I definitely want to talk about it for that reason. I, I was thinking about this. How is it that this tweet, no joke, first and foremost, 4,337 retweets I don't understand why people were retweeting it at all. Like there are people who genuinely like, I'm going to show this with somebody. I'm like, I was just making an inane point about me being short tempered. Seven, 18,000 likes, 8,000 uh, responses. That's a ratio, my friends. It's the weird thing though. People just wanted to hate. It seemed to make no sense. But more importantly, they made up in their minds a fantasy about what happened for the sake of dogpiling something that was irrelevant. Like Tim Pool thinks he's cool by saying this. And I was like, no, I'm just saying that like I'm a, I'm a rather, you know, kind of disagreeable person. It's not a positive or negative statement. Actually, I'd say it's a fairly negative statement assessment about myself. But my point is that it, it, it benefits me to a certain degree, right? 
that I'm unwilling to tolerate these kinds of deals. Imagine what that does for me in business. When I go to a meeting and they say, here's what we're going to do. When someone comes back and says, we've changed the terms, I say, have a nice day. It's, 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 it's the deal or nothing. That's how I play. But anyway, the reason I bring this up in the context of what's going on with the Babylon Bee is the two different realities. The uh, imposition mentality of the left and the unimposing mentality more of the right. By all means, I think you have a right to complain. If you go to a restaurant and they say, here are our terms, agree to them, and they don't abide by them, even if it's something as seemingly inane as waiting 15 minutes or whatever, well, you can choose to just grin and accept it, or you can choose to say, I humbly disagree, I feel disrespected, and for that, I'll be leaving. And that's fine. I, 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 I don't see a problem with that. But I do think you can see that there, there, there are people who don't want you to, for one, step outside of the collective, because I have no idea why they were mad at me about something so inane. But you can see how their view is they should impose on other people. I don't understand. They're mad at me for walking out the door and saying, I'm not going to impose on them. And then you can look at how they do things. They do impose. So it's interesting. I see things like that. And I see from here, people making things up. And so I was, you know, I was, I was talking with Ian about this too. I was like, it's an interesting phenomenon. I mean, look, you can see even like Leah Thomas is trending 105,000 tweets. I was like, it's really interesting because people will make things up to defend their positions on the left, less so on the right. Or you have, you, we have a very serious conundrum here with this, uh, with this diner scenario in that either people know it's nonsense to engage with and they're just a hate mob and they, that's what they're doing, or uh, they, they don't and they're just mindlessly following along. And I'm like, either way, it's a kind of a weird circumstance. But I don't want to derail too much into the diner thing. I just thought it was interesting how you have this hate for seemingly no reason or this demand, this desire, this rage, this entitlement. And so going back to, you know, Leah Thomas, it's, that's basically my point. An individual who would say, I deserve to be here even though everyone is booing. I'm like, that's kind of weird. You know, if everyone is looking at you, wouldn't you feel more comfortable not being there and, and, and figuring something else out? Now, look, my attitude on all of this, the rules are the rules. Leah Thomas is allowed to compete and none of these other females have said anything. So how am I supposed to say anything? That is to say, if I were to go into this event and I see people doing things I disagree with, I would just be like, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to support this. That's me. Other people would. Okay. I just don't understand how I'm supposed to be mad about it. As for the Babylon Bee, it goes back to Twitter and basically the same point. Twitter says we are going to abide by one worldview and that's it. And if you, if you, uh, if you refuse to abide by this, we'll ban you. I don't know, whatever. Maybe a little rambly, but uh, I'll leave it there. Otherwise, I'm going to go long. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.